Hey everyone, welcome to part 21 in this FXS Lowrider Restoration Series. If you're first joining us, click on the link in the top right corner. We'll take you to a listing of all the videos. You can click on the first video or wherever you left off from and continue from there. This continues from our last video, which was a rejuvenation of the rocker boxes, which was found during the disassembly. To mic out and clean up good, except for the bushings that need to be replaced so they were removed from the rocker arms. After which new bushings were pressed in by use of a special tool. We'll continue on now with the second half of this operation, where we begin with the reaming of the bushings that have now been installed into the rocker arms. Let's get started. So I'll demonstrate this procedure on one rocker now. The rock has been cleaned out. The reamer has been cleaned, everything lightly oiled. As I put the reamer in, I'm always putting just a, a little bit of force uh, clockwise, even as I put this tool on. So the reamer is never in the uh, counterclockwise direction. I'm already starting to turn with very light inward force. It kind of pulls in itself as you turn it, but I'm never going counterclockwise. And I'm turning it, it cuts. As it gets to the middle, there's an area where there's a little resistance as it kind of goes in and you have to get to the other bushing on the other side there it is and you cut the other bushing eventually making its way to the end and then I take this tool off and I just use a ratchet and notice I'm pulling for clockwise direction so it doesn't accidentally go in the other direction just to get to the end so I can push it out with my finger and I will manually remove it and we will take a look and see what we've collected in the cutting teeth very nice. I believe this reamer is just slightly worn. We could see uh, some tool marks in the reamer. I have found in this situation, alternate passes in opposite directions gets the rocker to fit perfectly in the bushing. So I'm putting it in the other direction and we're just gonna run it through in the other direction. And once this is completed, we can pull the reamer out in the other side and though it is hard to see when I take it out there is just a like a dusting of brass that's removed and each time that happens there's just a little bit of dusting so you get just more and more space to fit the tool in shown here from front to back I would stand the tool vertical and spray with oil while turning it in circles and you could see the microscopic brass fragments would make their way down to the paper towel each time a little bit less I finished the surface off with some polish. I've made and sized this polishing wheel to be smaller so centrifugal force uh, enlarges it when it's inside the bushing. Try and get a, uh, an even polishing in doing so. If there was any slight unevenness from the wear of the reamer, this will knock those sections down to make everything fine. And when I say uneven, I'm talking about astronomically small numbers here. Of course, everything has to be scrubbed engine ready for final fitment, especially after that polishing paste. So I took a lot of time to clean this and we're going to put all this in now. And we're going to check it out and we have a really nice fit, no binding at all. And now that we know we have no binding, let's take a look for deflection. There is no deflection on the top one. It's very easy to see the top one because it's out there in up in front. We can see a turn. The other side, we have to pull back the shaft here a little to have a closer inspection. Again, everything looks good and there is no deflection. So it's a good fit and I could spin it just fine and, and there's no binding. So this is uh, how I want all of them to be. It'll all be done in the same manner. As each one is completed, I put some tape on the shaft, not on an area of the shaft that's a bearing surface. And I grab it with a vice grip very lightly, just so I could get that hex key in and loosen that nut that's been tightened since the beginning and just give it a couple turns. I want to do that now. That way it'll be ready for assembly time. It lets me know that one is done and I can put it off to the side. Got everything laid out on the table as the bench is cleaned up for the next phase of cleaning and mechanical polishing of the rocker boxes.
I want to make sure that all grease and dirt is removed from the external surfaces before the rocker box is hit with the buffing wheel. This area here brought upon by years of leaking push rod tube seals. Using a buffing wheel on a drill, I'm testing out this blue compound first. This is smoother than the gray. I wanted to be sure before I went with gray first, it's coarser. And I realized I'm doing this on the drill. My buffing wheel is uh, too small. It's actually uh, a grinding wheel, so I would have to take apart the whole thing. My friend Jerry up the block uh, offered me his to use on this, but I had like an hour left. By the time uh, we had spoke about this, I just continued on this way. So basically the gray cuts a bit deeper it leaves a, a bit of a swirl a silhouette in there so I just follow up with the blue thereafter and it takes a swirl out so here I am working with the gray first and it, it just cleans it up really nice really quick these are shine boxes but you see that swirl and that's why we revisit with the blue thereafter and then it makes for a nice reflection and I'm not going to use the paste till it's mounted on the engine and I know that the work is done where I get that really nice mirror finish so I'm going to take this other one, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Now both boxes polished and washed again, it's time to do assembly to measure and play and order shims if needed. Working with one rocker box at a time, I move back to the bench, including a flat with 1000 grit sandpaper set up. Spray a little bit of oil on the sandpaper. We're just going to clean up the face of the spacer right quick. And this is simply done with a figure eight motion on both sides, making sure that there are no burrs and being able to look and make sure that the spacer is also flat and true on both sides as well. For obvious reasons, this has to be done before you check your end play. The spacer is then washed and re-oiled and we're ready to continue. Everything's going to be assembled now. I'm only using a thin oil. Stop here for a moment, just make sure nothing's binding. This looks good. I'm going to be using the old nuts and bolts and washers for the test assembly. The final fit will get all the new stuff. Also put that old nylon washer back in the front. Now repeat the same exact process for the other side. These call for 12 to 18 foot pounds, so we're going to tighten in the middle 180 inch pounds. The next is 10 foot pounds, sit between 8 and 12 foot pounds, so 120 inch pounds is what we're going for. With everything torqued correctly, I make sure that the rocker arms are moving freely, that there's no binding anywhere. Pushing the rocker arms against the far end, I take measurements of the end play, and right here I'm seeing. 0 0.08 I'm going to try out 0 0.09 for demonstration and it doesn't fit so 0 0.08 for this side this side is a tight pull at 13 there's no need to try any others so we're going to go with 13 and write that one down we're now going to repeat the same exact process on the other rocker box first I'll make sure that both rocker arms are moving freely I check the first one and I see that the measurement is 14 thousandths of an inch 
The second one has a tight pull at 10 thousandths of an inch. So I'll make these annotations now, knowing that there needs to be 4 thousandths clearance on both sides. The shims have arrived. We're going to disassemble the boxes, scrub them thoroughly, put the shims in, and reassemble. When I get started with the cleaning process, not only is it degreased and blown out with air like before, but I also do an extra cycle with brake cleaner and air to get any extra debris that I might have missed. Everything is cleaned, lightly coated with 60 weight and ready for assembly. I'll be using this new nut and bolt kit I got from Colony. I think it's much better than what I had. And I got a couple of 5,000 shims. I was planning on putting a shim into one side to bring this 14 down to 9. I want to show you the problem I had. If I look at the shim on this side, we can see that the inner diameter clearly doesn't line up. And you could argue that it wasn't intended to. But I wanted to point out that on this side, clearly it's a no-go. Now if we take the shim and bring it down to the end of the shaft, we could see here, that while it looks like it's the same size in the outer diameter, there's a, a, a groove cut right there at the end. So the inner diameter is, again, a significantly different size. I don't have a good feeling about these shims. And while this is well within tolerance, and I mean well within tolerance, this was in the hopes of bringing those two sides into the same clearance. I don't think I'm going to go with it. I'm not going to use this shim. I'm going to take it out. And we're going to assemble this without it. I'll leave good enough alone. I don't need this thing breaking in the bike because things aren't lined up. Look at that. That I don't know if all of them are like that. It's just OEM. If these shims of aftermarket ones don't have that. But we're not going to do it. We're just going to get underway with assembly. Leave this as 14 on one side. 10 on the other. This assembly was just the same as last time. Except for the fact that new parts are being used. You can see also that I'm cleaning any oil off of the thread work. The thread was also inspected for the new bolts to make sure that if the file had to be used to straighten any threads, they were. Instead of using thin oil this time, I've been using 60 weight on all the parts. It's also important that I don't get any dust or contaminants in this as I build it. And then afterwards, I'm going to cover everything because this is going to go right onto the heads once this is all completed for the final build. Here's those same shaft seals that I used last time. They never leaked, so I'm ordering them again. This is what they look like brand new before they're sort of crunched. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of old with the new. This rocket box is completed, ready for mounting onto the head. I decided that I would just take a minute and polish just part of it to see how it would look with the remainder of the swirl removed, and I see it looks pretty good, so I'm very happy with that. The second rocket box was then cleaned and then assembled in the exact same fashion, and with both of them done, we're ready to start cleaning the actual heads so we can mount these back on them. I'm going to bring the heads outside for inspection. I'm going to hit them with some high-pressure air. This gasket looks good, so we're going to clean it and reuse it. So we'll bring this over to the garage. And I just want to be sure that any dust or any crud or any foreign matter that's been introduced into these while it was opened up is blown out. So any areas, any ports, I've got the air compressor turned up on max to ensure that all of that is going to be removed.
put a little 60 weight oil here into the combustor chamber around the valve seats and allowed it to permeate a bit so I could then wipe it out, clean out some of the dirt in the combustor chamber and around the valve seats. Again, this is just for cleaning and some short-term preservation until these heads go on. The other one was cleaned up in the exact same manner. Flip the first head over to begin assembly. I'm going to start by cleaning the mating surfaces. You could use acetone or I'm using 99% pure alcohol either way. Prepared the end of the valve stems. I probably should have done this before I cleaned the mating surfaces, but I recleaned the surfaces thereafter. Made sure that there was no assembly lube on there. I cleaned up those gaskets. They're still brand new, so I put them right back on after inspecting them. No problem at all. The rocker box mating surface is also cleaned up. Also dress the end of the rocker arms with a little bit of assembly lube. Then take a moment to ensure that it's distributed evenly on each side. Holding the head and gasket in place with my fingers, I turn the head over, simply placing it onto the rocker box. It falls straight down into place. I grab everything securely as one unit very carefully, turn it back over, and lay it right side up just like that i drop in all the washers next and then the nuts are put on but before they are put on the rocker box can be slightly lifted to ensure that the gasket is straight everything's only finger tighten at this point to draw out the slack we'll get the rear head to this level of completion and then we'll continue with the other rocker box finish i start with this small half inch wrench slowly drawing out the slack in a crisscross motion working from the middle of the rocker box bolts then on outward i could only exert a couple of foot pounds that's it not much we're going to be working with the torque wrench next the first round of torquing will be set at 145 inch pounds Now I'll be doing the final round of torquing at 175 inch pounds. Now I'll lean it on its side for a better grip. And that's it. This head is ready for installation. With the second rocker box torqued, our project is brought to a close. I hope you found this video informative and entertaining. Do me a favor, click that like button and that subscribe button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. Lets you know when there's more videos. A new link will be provided in the top right corner when another video comes out in the series. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?